On April 24th, 2019, fishermen first spotted a strange white whale near Ingoy, a 6.9 square mile island in Norway's far north Finnmark region, situated within the Arctic Circle. The marine mammal swam unusually close to their fishing vessel, and incredibly appeared friendly and tame. Upon closer inspection, the fishermen also noticed what looked to be a man-made harness around the whale's midsection, and it was almost as if the whale wanted them to take it off. Reaching into the water to oblige, the fisherman was startled to find a buckle stamped with the mark Equipment St. Petersburg. It was a discovery that would set off remarkable speculation and stoke international intrigue. Just where did the whale come from? And was it possible that this creature could be a Russian spy? The use of hyper-intelligent sea mammals such as dolphins and whales for military purposes has been a reality for decades. The U.S. Navy worked with bottlenose dolphins and California sea lions in the 1960s. The mammals were trained to help with detection of underwater enemy mines, as well as aid in the design of new submarines and underwater weapons. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union's Navy had its own marine mammal research facility. It opened in 1965 at Kazachia Bukta, near Sevastopol in the Crimea region of the Black Sea. That program focused primarily on training dolphins for tasks similar to those undertaken by their American cousins. Retired Colonel Viktor Baronets commented about the Soviet program, which he witnessed firsthand by saying, quote, Americans looked into this first, but when Soviet intelligence found out the tasks the U.S. dolphins were completing in the 1960s, the Defense Ministry at the time decided to address this issue. Even sharks and marine birds have been tested for their military capabilities, albeit with varying degrees of success. The Americans found dolphins and sea lions the best, the former for their highly developed sonar, the latter for their excellent underwater vision. Not much more thought was given about these programs since the demise of the Cold War. That is until April 2019, when a friendly beluga whale swam around a fishing boat in the Bay of Ingui in the far north of Norway. When the fishermen noticed the mysterious strap around the whale's midsection, it had been coming up to the ships and scraping against them. It clearly wanted to rid itself of whatever was attached to it, and the fishermen even speculated that whatever this object was, it might be causing the whale pain or making it difficult for it to swim. When one of the men eventually jumped into the frigid Arctic Ocean water to cut the harness off the whale, the beluga did not resist, clearly being used to human contact. One of the fishermen present, Joar Heston, later told Norwegian state broadcaster NRK that, quote, It came over to us, and as it approached, we saw that it had some sort of harness on it. It kept searching for boats and people, and then it came all the way to the boat and tried to rub the straps off. NRK first reported on the beluga whale sighting on April 26, 2019. It was even reported that there had been possible earlier sightings of the whale two days before it swam next to the fishing vessels. The story was shared internationally, and soon enough it went viral. The unusual harness found on the beluga had markings on it that strongly suggested it came from Russia, and more specifically St. Petersburg. Media and local speculation about the origins of the whale circulated tirelessly, with most suspicion of ownership directed at the Kremlin. Some were convinced that this beluga was an escaped specimen from a Russian whale training project for military purposes in the Arctic region. The exact purpose of the harness was never identified. It was fitted with a mount, which may have possibly been used to accommodate a small camera or other piece of equipment. However, nothing was found attached to the harness when it was taken off the whale. The Norwegian Directorate of Fisheries, or Fiskeri Direktorate, released photos revealing one of the buckles that has the words Equipment and St. Petersburg molded into it. Although not the full phrase Equipment of St. Petersburg, as was incorrectly reported by several media outlets. The harness also has an unidentified logo on it. The Fiskeri Directorate released an additional picture showing a hook-like appendage of the harness. It was thought that perhaps the whale was trained to use the hook-like device to retrieve objects from the water.
with speculation running rife regarding the provenance of the beluga's harness. Attention honed in on where exactly the beluga may have originated from. Most media outlets in the West were convinced that the hapless beluga was part of a Russian military training program. The markings on the harness strongly suggested that it originated from St. Petersburg, where the Russian Navy's main headquarters are located. Alternatively, the country's northern fleet operates from a cluster of bases in the Arctic region, where the whale could have come from. This fleet includes Navy facilities in Murmansk on the Barents Sea that are believed to be the base for ongoing sea mammal training programs. It did seem rather odd, however, that these set markings used Latin script rather than Cyrillic script, which is used in Russian. Two possibilities were theorized. Either it was some sort of effort on someone else's behalf to make it seem like the whale came from Russia, or the Russians had decided to mask the origin of the mammal by introducing foreign script in the labeling, leaving leeway for plausible deniability. Either way, no one was claiming ownership of the whale, and no entity, Russian or otherwise, had reported a missing beluga. Martin Bio of the Norwegian Institute of Marine Research certainly believed that the whale was part of a military effort, as he stated in his interview with NRK, quote, I have colleagues here who put satellite tags on white whales, but they do not use this type of equipment. I've never seen anyone doing research this way. If the whale comes from Russia, and there is great reason to believe it, then it is not Russian scientists, but rather the Russian Navy that has done this. But why would Russia lose a whale in the area? The strategic significance of the Arctic region has grown tremendously in recent years, in great part thanks to the discovery of huge oil deposits in the region, but also due to the ease of year-round access helped by climate change diminishing the sea ice. Russia has always made extensive use of the Arctic region for military installations and exercises. In fact, the Russian Navy's northern fleet undertook a major drill involving 20 ships in the Arctic Barents Sea on April 25, 2019, the same date that the lone beluga first appeared in the Bay of Norway's Ingui Island. Moscow has been very vocal about its push to increase its military presence and operational capacity above the Arctic Circle. As such, it's not much of a stretch to envision that Russia would at least want to re-explore the practicality of using beluga whales for military purposes. Russia might want to use a mammal that can traverse and dive easily, deeply, and far in the Arctic Ocean, given that it considers the Arctic Circle as its sphere of influence in Europe's far north. It actually makes sense that a country's navy might consider actively training belugas for military exercises. The beluga is a relatively small whale, and although shy in the wild, is known to be easily trained with a friendly and obliging disposition towards human handlers. Belugas are slightly larger than dolphins, with males growing up to 18 feet long and weighing up to 3,500 pounds. They're fully adapted to living in the Arctic, including under the ice cap. Belugas can swim and dive comfortably even in the extremely cold waters of the Arctic Ocean. They can also swim great distances. They've shown the ability to easily dive to depths deeper than 1,900 feet, and in at least one recorded exercise, all the way down to 2,860 feet. Those depths are far deeper than even most submarines can manage. But what might trained belugas actually achieve? For one thing, it could conduct certain underwater reconnaissance tasks, including locating underwater sensors and mines. A camera fixed to a harness could be very beneficial for these exercises. For another, a beluga could also help inspect the hulls of ships in port. It could also help guard maritime facilities against enemy divers and saboteurs. Relations between Norway and Russia have never been particularly good. Norway is always considered the most fervently pro-NATO country in Scandinavia, and the Russians have always coveted its northernmost islands and sea lanes. But relations between the two countries have been particularly strained in recent years. The beluga came shortly after several accusations from Norway that Russian technological military exercises had jammed GPS signals in the region. Since 2017, the Norwegian Intelligence Service, NIS, also known as the Etteretningstjenesten, or e -tjenesten, the country's top military intelligence agency has accused Russia of taunting Norway with exercises involving mock airstrikes against a secretive radar installation in the coastal town of Vardø. Vardø is located in the region of Finnmark, 
which is also where the island of Ingui is. The Norwegian installation is said to host ballistic missile defense and other intelligence gathering capabilities. However, Norway insists the installation is only for monitoring general air and space activity. The Russians believe that the installation has been set up to facilitate NATO espionage of their country. Russia has also accused Norway of actively allowing NATO war games and military exercises very close to Russia's border, which Russia deems highly provocative and unnecessary. Other theories hold that the harnessed beluga may indeed be linked to Russia, but as part of a more benign project. In February 2019, Russia's Federal Security Service, better known as the FSB, reported that it had raided a fish farm in the country's Far East and seized 11 orcas and 90 belugas that had been kept in horribly confined, squalid conditions. The imprisoned mammals were being captured, bred, and sold to Chinese aquariums. The conditions were so terrible and generated so much public outcry that the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, personally intervened in the case. Some have speculated that this beluga was one of those rescues. Other analysts have noted that the Russian government does issue special licenses to communities in the country's far north to capture belugas to train and then sell to aquariums and water parks. One such license was issued to the village of Nilmogba, in the semi-autonomous Republic of Karelia, which sits on the White Sea, an inland of the Barents Sea. The Arctic village is less than a thousand miles from Ingoy Island. This beluga could be one of those captured creatures. Morten Vikeby, a former Norwegian consul to the Russian city of Murmansk, offered another alternative theory. He claimed that the beluga reminded him of a therapy whale he had seen a decade before at a diving center in northern Russia. That whale was used to entertain tour groups of children with mental disabilities. It could be that this beluga was a similar escaped therapy whale. Beluga remains a local celebrity in the waters off Ingui Island. Local children have even named him Hvaldmir, which is a portmanteau of the Norwegian word for whale, Hval, and the common Russian name Vladimir. Many believe that Hvaldmir is the beluga recorded returning a dropped iPhone to a Norwegian woman only a few days after the harness was removed. The second video went viral, just as the original news of the alleged spy whale did. To this day, whether a contemporary CMMO military program exists and the true origins of Valdemir remain a mystery. Mm -hmm.